All right, hello today. This is a continuation of the last tutorial where we went over how to set up this kind of house where you have the sliders that you can change the size and the couple other parameters. So in this one, we're going to move a little further and set up some window stuff. So there's going to be an edge buffer, how close to the edge they are, top buffer, and a bottom buffer. I got them mixed up when I was doing it, but it's easy to fix. And then a vertical frequency. So that one's a little easier to see when you have um, you know, a higher house. So obviously if it goes this high, you want to change the buffer's value. But that's easy enough to do. And we get a little funkiness there, but that's okay. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's just jump right in. So for this one, we are going to use this grid. So if you didn't set it up, it's really easy. You just change the rows and columns to a two, and then you copy these parameters over. Oh, look, I have a second one. I don't need both of those, just one. Okay, so then we're going to drop down a carve node. So carve node is basically going to split each side into its own, um, own object. And we'll show that a little more by dropping down a second carve node. And so now you can see, if we use our second U and our first U, you can see that we're dragging the uh, corners out, which is exactly what we want. We want to copy these, though. We want them to be the same on both of them. So we're just going to copy parameter and do 1 minus that, that parameter. Awesome. So now, if we scale this one up, they move in, which is perfect. We're going to add another parameter here to our controller node and call it, um, let's call it edge buffer. Right, we'll call it window edge buffer. And that'll be great. We don't need more than one, so we can lock that at a zero to one value. And we'll copy that and paste it into our second um, carved node's first U value. So now we have our controller and we can move it in. Okay, this is perfect. So now we can have these um, windows not over the edge. So we're definitely going to have this at some sort of value, but um, we'll see what we'll see what value we want to actually use in this minute. Okay, next we want to drop down another resample. This is so we can have you know multiple windows on the same wall, basically. Um, but spaced relatively evenly. So you can see how that works. We'll have a window at each point, and that should be, I think that'll work pretty well. We'll find out. Okay, we're going to drop down a box, another box for our window object. Um, we'll just change the one value to 0.2. Yeah, that works, 0.1. You know, actually, we do need it a little thicker because we're going to take these out of the you know, the walls. Okay, so we got our resample. Next thing we're going to do, this is a little interesting way to do this, but it's the best way that I've found. We're going to poly extrude, not bevel, extrude this. So we need to go up, we don't need to go up that high, just like one, and then we'll transform down 0.5. These don't need to be procedural because this um, the stuff later will be will do it for us. Okay, now we're going to drop down a normal mode. So what this does is it puts normals on our primitives, or we need to change it to primitives. Awesome. So then we do an attribute transfer. We want to go from this to this. So we're tra changing our normals onto these points. Um, but first, it doesn't take them to the points right away. It takes it from primitive to primitive. So then we need to do an attribute promote. We need to go from primitive to point, and the original name is n for normal. So now you can see that our normals are all facing the correct direction, which is what we need. Um, if that doesn't make sense, just watch through it again a couple times, and you'll get it. It's a little tricky, but... Uh, it's a pretty useful technique to know. Okay, now we will do a copy stamp. Except for we need to copy to those new points. And because 
we have the normals going the right way, look at that. They're all, the windows are, you know, well, we're getting there. We'll just change those values. You could also rotate it here, drop down and transform, but we don't necessarily need to because we, uh, we don't really have windows yet, they're just a digital box. Okay, so one thing, obviously, that is a problem here is the windows are on the ground, which is not what we want. So, let's do the same thing we did earlier. Let's grab this line, actually, and we'll bring it all the way down here and put a carve node on it. So this carve node is going to be a top buffer, or a bottom buffer, and a top buffer. Okay? So we're just going to find our house controller node here again. And let's organize this a little better. Let's drop down a Windows folder. We'll just put everything that pertains to Windows in this folder, because there's going to be a few things. And then we'll put down a couple more floats. We'll call this one top buffer. And you know, range of 0 to 1, you can lock it, because you're not going to need anything else. And then we'll put down another one. I hope it didn't take. Oh, I put two down earlier. Okay, now we'll put this one as a bottom buffer. Awesome. Now we'll do zero to one and hit accept. Okay, so we'll just copy this into our bottom buffer. This is really helpful later, so you don't have to actually like go find the node that you want this to be at one. So you don't have to go find the node that does this. You just have everything in one place. Cool. So now we can bring them up or down. Sweet. And we want to do a resample also. So this resample will be pretty long, probably like that, maybe too long. Obviously, we can adjust it. Maybe we'll put that one in our house controller also. That'd probably be good. We'll just add a, another float and call this um, vertical frequency. Um, we could set up one like this for the horizontal frequency also, but I don't have it right now. Okay, just copy parameter and paste that in your. Uh, in there and it was about two before so we'll put it about two I guess whatever cool so now we've got that and now we want to do a copy stamp we want to copy these and these so now let me turn off the renderer thing there so we can see a little easier and switch over to that okay so what this does this one is setting up the points like the heights we want the windows at and this one is setting up where the windows are. So we've got this here. This is where all of our windows are going to be. And we'll just show that real quick by popping our windows on. Awesome. This obviously is not exactly what we want. But it's not, it's not far off. So all we need to do is just change the top buffer. Oh, I have those mixed up. Look at that. Oh, well. You know how to change it. And then the vertical frequency. You can adjust how many. And so something like that is very reasonable. And I think we do need to have a horizontal frequency slider, but eh, I'll not worry about it for now. Cool. So now we've got the locations of all our windows. I'm going to turn off the normals and points just to clean up our view space a little. Neat. So right here, I'm going to rename this to walls out. And then we're going to just drop down a bool. And we want this one to be A and this one to be B. And actually, it doesn't really matter that much. But we're going to subtract A minus B. Cool. So now we have holes for all of our windows, which is awesome. And that'll probably do it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you learned something new. See you next time.